What's the difference between salt water and chlorine in swimming pools? Not as much as you would like to think. They're basically the same thing. And you might be surprised to hear that, but it would be more aptly named a chlorine generation system or a chlorine regeneration system as opposed to like salt, water, anything. And the reason why is because the, the system uses electrolysis and sodium chloride to generate free chlorine for your pool. So it's not an alternative to chlorine in any way. Basically what it boils down to is this. In a chlorine pool, you go to a store, you buy some chlorine that somebody made for you. You just buy the finished product, you pour it in your pool. When you have a salt chlorine generator, you're more or less doing the job of that person that you were buying it from before, except you're making it right in your swimming pool. And that's great. It's super convenient. There's a lot of advantages to it. There are disadvantages as well. Um, part of the chemical process of generating your chlorine from salt, there's going to be some uh, negative byproducts as a result of that. And in theory, it would be better if those were not generated in your swimming pool. So there is sometimes an advantage to having the, the, the chlorine bought from an external source versus making it yourself in the water. What it comes down to is you're going to have a high inclination to develop a high pH in a salt chlorine generated swimming pool because that's just a function of the chemical reaction of generating this free chlorine for your pool is one of the byproducts is a very, very alkaline pH. And as a result, it's going to constantly drive your pH up. Does that mean every pool has a high pH if you have salt water? No, there's external factors. There's other things to consider here. Um, even something like rainwater that drips through pine trees and then into your pool, that will lower the pH in your pool. So you might reach some sort of stasis where the salt chlorine generator makes the pH go up, but the pine trees make the pH go down. Your pool remains relatively neutral. And then you're thinking that I'm a liar, but I'm not because that's how salt chlorine generators work. Most pools with a salt chlorine generator will run high on the pH uh, spectrum and it's something that you're going to have to attend to regularly as part of being a salt chlorine pool owner. And it's also worth noting, let's say that you have salt chlorine, you're going this direction, you like it, you get it, that it kind of generates your own chlorine, but do you still add regular chlorine to your pool or can you add regular chlorine to your pool? And the answer is yes and yes. Uh, not only can you add regular chlorine to a saltwater pool, you should add chlorine to a saltwater pool. And the reason why is the salt chlorine generator is a maintenance dosing system. So it, you know, once you have an established free chlorine level, it will kind of hold it there. That's what, what it's made to do. So what if you had zero parts per million free chlorine? Should you just crank up the dial on your salt chlorinator and you know, have it really crank out a bunch of chlorine, like a lot of people do. That is how they use the system, but it's not how it's designed. You should take some chlorine, manually add it to the water, get your chlorine level where you want it, and then use that salt chlorinator to try to hold it there at that level. It is made for maintenance dosing. So in terms of what's the difference, it's not that much. They're both chlorine swimming pools. A regular chlorine pool will have a much lower TDS level than a salt chlorine generated pool. Uh, TDS is total dissolved solids. It just, it's a number that we can check to indicate how old this water is or how much stuff has been dissolved into this water over time. Uh, typically speaking, 2,500 parts per million might be considered like the maximum you should have in a regular chlorine pool. But in a salt pool, it's kind of weird and different because we're going to take the regular water plus we're going to add about 3,000 parts per million of salt. So from day one, you have more than 3,000 parts per million of TDS in this pool because we just put 3,000 parts per million of salt in. So a lot of conventional chemistry doesn't really work for saltwater pools. According to the saturation index, you're very likely going to be in a scaling state and you just kind of ignore those things with saltwater pools or approach it differently. You can't just measure high TDS and go, oh, time to drain and refill this old water. You have to measure the starting point from when you add your salt and whatever was in the water to begin with. And then 1,500 parts per million higher than that in terms of TDS is when that water is old and needs to be partially drained and refilled. The end result is that the swimming pool remains the same. You do the same amount of maintenance to a salt pool as you do a chlorine pool. You still use chlorine in both applications. It's 
it's really not as different as you think. You don't taste the salt. It does feel a little different on the skin. That's something that people really do like. It does feel softer on the skin swimming in a salt pool versus swimming in a regular chlorine pool, typically speaking. And I mean, that alone is enough for some people not to consider the convenience of getting most of the chlorine you need just automatically generated. And don't get me started about you know, when things happen and all of a sudden there's runs on chlorine and you can't even buy chlorine anymore. That's a, we went through that a couple of years ago and that's not good. And man, the, the people who had salt chlorine generators had a distinct advantage at that point because you can't run a pool with no chlorine in it. And if there's no chlorine to buy, what are you going to do? If you have a salt chlorine generator, you keep making your own chlorine, but everybody else, I guess, would be out of luck in that situation. So there's a lot to consider, you know, when you're looking at salt versus not salt. And we're not even taking into consideration a host of peripheral items, which you could potentially buy for a swimming pool. Like if you come to me and say, should I get salt or not? I usually don't answer that question directly. I say to you, can we take a step back here? And tell me why you're looking at salt. Most people will, will qualify the question and say, okay, well, I, I want salt because I'm thinking, you know, may, it'd be nice to have less maintenance. That's so common. I hear that all the time. And I would say, but that's not how you would get less maintenance. If you want less maintenance, I can help you get less maintenance in this pool, but it's not by adding salt to it. That wouldn't, that wouldn't change the maintenance at all. In fact, I could probably make an argument that it might even increase the amount of time and maintenance that you have to spend on your swimming pool. So you have to consider, you know, asking the right questions is important as well. If you're looking at salt versus not salt, I would encourage you to kind of look at the, the reasons why you're thinking about salt. Is it convenience? Is it cost? Is it the way it feels? Why is it that you want salt? And make sure that you're not barking up the wrong tree. It's salt is not maintenance free. It's not easier to take care of than a regular chlorine pool. Um, most people, if you react to poor water in a regular chlorine pool, you'll react to poor water in a chlorine pool. Most people don't realize that it's, it's seldom the chlorine in the water itself that people react to. It's almost always a problem with the pH level or a problem with a high level of combined chlorine in the water. I mean, it's a deep subject, swimming pools. There's a lot going on here. Salt versus chlorine. I don't have a problem with salt. I like salt chlorine pools for what they are, but they're not a silver bullet to maintenance-free swimming pools or anything like that. It's just an option. There are some pros. There are some cons. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.